Welcome to the first of two videos that will introduce unit conversions followed by conversions between chemical quantities with the aid of the triangle, which will allow the beginning student to convert between moles, grams, and particles of a substance. This review will help the beginning student to develop essential skills for more advanced concepts found in the next video, for example, introductory stoichiometric calculations, as well as more advanced limiting reactant stoichiometric calculations. To understand concepts within chemical quantity conversions, such as converting moles of a substance to grams of a substance, it is best to take a step back and review the concepts within basic unit conversions, which is sometimes called dimensional analysis or unit transposition. To do this, we will begin with a simple conversion. Given 42 centimeters, we are asked how many inches is this? Given 2.54 centimeters equals 1 inch. While the author realizes there are many shortcuts and even websites that will perform any conversion, we need to develop this imperative skill so we can apply it to more complicated chemistry exercises. So let's begin with the following premise. If I multiply the 42 centimeters by 1, then the value is still the same. But what if I could derive a new definition for the numerical value of 1? For example, if I divide both sides of this equality by 2.54 centimeters or divide both sides of this equality by 1 inch, the equalities will still hold. After simplification, we have now derived two new expressions for the numerical value of 1. If the newly derived expression for the value of 1 is substituted, the centimeter units will cancel and the desired unit of inches will remain. After simple division, we get a suggestion on our calculator, which is rounded to two significant figures, 17 inches. At this point, it is worth reviewing the significant figure rule for multiplication and division. The least number of sig figs within your arithmetic manipulation must be reflected in your final answer. Thus, two sig figs divided by infinite sig figs is two sig figs. Remember, if a numerical value is within a definition, it is assumed to have infinite sig figs. We have now demonstrated that the derived expression on the left allows one to convert from centimeters to inches, and we can assume the derived expression on the right allows one to convert from inches to centimeters. Let's prove this hypothesis. To convert inches to centimeters, then the same problem-solving strategy exists. Simply multiply the given quantity by 1, which was derived to be 2.54 centimeters over 1 inch after substitution. The inch units cancel, affording the desired unit of centimeters, with the correct number of sig figs, 4, after rounding. Regardless of what values n units are part of a definition, one can derive two conversion factors. One side of the definition can be in the numerator, and the other side can be within the denominator, or vice versa, which is mathematically proven here. The key is the numerator must equal what is in the denominator, which means we do not have to derive the two resultant conversion factors from any definition. We can simply write them by inspection. Remember that whatever is in the numerator has to equal what is in the denominator when writing a conversion factor. So let's do a conversion that many may not be familiar with and apply the same approach. Pascals to millimeters mercury. Given 101,325 pascals equals 760 millimeters mercury. Simply write the given quantity, then your units will guide you. For example, write the unit to cancel in the denominator and the desired unit in the numerator as shown. Now simply write the numerical values that equate these units from the given definition and complete the arithmetic manipulation and round to correct sig figs, which is three sig figs here. Notice that the conversion factor that allows this unit transposition was written by inspection and it was not necessary to derive it. To further review and reinforce unit conversions, let's convert 1,182 meters to miles, using only the given definitions. From the given definitions, we see that we can convert meters to centimeters, and centimeters to inches, and inches to feet, 
and feet to miles. Our plan has a total of four arrows, which means the employment of four conversion factors. Let's use the units of our plan to guide the execution of this exercise. So first, write down what is given, then place the unit to be canceled in the denominator and the desired unit in the numerator for each conversion factor, as shown. Meters to centimeters, centimeters to inches, inches to feet, feet to miles, and the desired unit of miles is obtained. Now, simply go back and add the numerical values that allow the units in the numerator to equal the units in the denominator. For example, 100 centimeters equals 1 meter, which are all supplied within the given definitions. Finally, solve the problem and round to the correct number of sig figs, which is 4. Now let's try an abstract example of converting pence to skits, given the following abstract definitions. From the given definitions, we see that we can convert pence to draggles, and draggles to gigs, and gigs to munchnones, and munchnones to skits. Our plan has a total of four arrows, which means the employment of four conversion factors. Let's use the units of our plan to guide the execution of this exercise. First, write down what is given, then place the unit to be canceled in the denominator and the desired unit in the numerator for each conversion factor. Pence to draggles, draggles to gigs, gigs to munchnones, munchnones to skits, which is the final desired unit. Now simply go back and add the numerical values that allow the units in the numerator to equal the units in the denominator. For example, 2.5 draggles equals 1.8 pence, which are all supplied within the definitions. Finally, solve the problem and round to the correct number of sig figs, which in this case is 2. Now let's try a unit conversion where we have to convert the numerator and the denominator. The numerator is a distance conversion, feet to inches, inches to centimeters, and the denominator is a time conversion, hours to minutes, minutes to seconds. Again, there are four arrows in our plan, which abstractly represents the employment of four conversion factors. So write down what is given, then place the unit to be canceled in the numerator and the desired unit in the denominator, hours to minutes, and minutes to seconds, to afford the desired unit of seconds in the denominator. Now convert feet to inches and inches to centimeters which completes the desired units of centimeters per second. Now write the numerical values that allow these sets of units to be equated. 60 minutes in one hour, 60 seconds in one minute, 12 inches in one foot, 2.54 centimeters in one inch. Finally, solve the problem and round the three sig figs to afford the final answer. So now let's try one more conversion that may, again, seem like an abstract exercise. Converting 89.5 grams of gold to moles of gold given 196.97 grams of gold equal one mole of gold. No matter what equality is given, we can always write two conversion factors. One to convert from grams to moles and one to convert from moles to grams. In this example, we will need the grams to moles conversion factor. Grams gold cancel, giving the desired units of moles gold, and correcting for sig figs, we have the final answer in moles gold. While the given definition of 196.97 grams of gold equals one mole of gold may have seemed odd at first, the equality is not made up or something random. In fact, one mole of x equals its molar mass in grams of x. The value of 196.97 grams of gold came from the periodic table, which is the atomic mass for gold. Thus, one mole of whatever element we are talking about is equal to its atomic mass in grams, which is often called its molar mass. With this knowledge, let's convert 82.1 mole of silver to gram silver. First we need to write our definition. 
107.87 grams of silver equal one mole of silver. And again, no matter what equality is given, we can always write two conversion factors. One to convert from grams to moles, and one to convert from moles to grams. Again, 107.87 grams came from the periodic table, the atomic mass of silver. In this example, we will need the moles to grams conversion factor. Moles silver cancel, giving the desired unit of grams silver, and correcting for sig figs, we have our final answer in grams silver. In the next example, we have to convert 32.9 grams of ethanol to moles of ethanol. Recall, one mole of X is equal to the molar mass of X. We need to develop a new skill, calculating the molar mass of any compound with the aid of the periodic table. Ethanol has two carbons, six hydrogens, and one oxygen in the formula. Now, multiply the molar mass of each element, which was found on the periodic table, and add this up to afford the molar mass of ethanol, which is 46.07 grams, after rounding to the hundredths place. Thus, 46.07 grams of ethanol equal one mole of ethanol. Now, two conversion factors can be imagined. Starting from the given grams of ethanol, we will need the conversion factor that converts grams to moles. Grams ethanol cancel, giving the desired units of moles of ethanol, and correcting for sig figs, we have our final answer. Now let's try one more conversion that may, again, seem like an abstract exercise. Converting 2.82 moles of gold to atoms of gold, given 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of gold equal one mole of gold. Recall, no matter what equality is given, we can always write two conversion factors. In this case, one to convert from number of atoms to moles, and the other to convert from moles to numbers of atoms. So write down the given quantity. We will need the moles to number of atoms conversion factor here. Moles cancel, giving the desired unit of number of atoms of gold, and correcting for sig figs, we have our final answer in number of atoms of gold. While the given definition of 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of gold equal one mole of gold may have seemed odd, this equality is not fictitious. In fact, one mole of X equals 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd particles of X. Where particles can be atoms, molecules, ions, etc. Whatever it is we are talking about as defined by X. The value of 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd is a special value and it's called Avogadro's number, which is the number of particles in one mole. This is similar to the phrase one dozen eggs equals 12 eggs, or simply one dozen of X equals 12 of X. The word dozen is in fact a number, 12. Similarly, mole is a number, 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. So let's review all of these concepts by converting moles to grams and moles to molecules for C7H14O2, isopentyl acetate. Recall, one mole of X is equal to the molar mass of X. Thus, we need to first calculate the molar mass of C7H14O2 with the aid of our periodic table. There are seven carbons, 14 hydrogens, and two oxygens within the molecule and we can glean the atomic masses or molar masses for each element from the periodic table and multiply the molar mass of each element and add this up to afford the molar mass of the compound, which is 130.18 after rounding to the hundredths place. Thus, one mole equals 130.18 grams. Now, two conversion factors can be imagined that allow for either conversion. Starting with the given value in moles, we will need the conversion factor that converts moles to grams. Moles cancel, giving the desired unit of grams, and correcting for sig figs, we have our final answer in grams of isopentyl acetate. Now let's convert the same number of moles of C7H14O2 to number of molecules of C7H14O2. First, we need to write our definition that will allow us to convert between moles and number of molecules. 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd molecules of C7H14O2 
equal one mole of C7H14O2. No matter what equality is given, we can always write two conversion factors, one to convert from number of particles to moles, and one to convert from moles to number of particles. Starting with the given quantity, we will need the moles to number of molecules conversion factor. Moles cancel, giving the desired unit of number of molecules, and correcting for sig figs, we have our final answer. In the previous exercises, one mole of whatever we are talking about is equal to its mass in grams, which can be calculated with the aid of the periodic table. In addition, one mole of whatever we are talking about is also equal to Avogadro's number of particles. Again, once X is defined, we can be more specific by using molecules, atoms, or ions instead of particles. Employing the transitive property, we can also equate number of particles and molar mass as shown, which now completes our triangle. Being able to zip around the triangle will be an imperative skill when we tackle even more challenging exercises in chemistry, such as stoichiometric exercises and limiting reactant exercises in the next video.